Okay, if you look here, I've press fitted the bearings or the bushings into the extruder carriage. Um, what I found is the best way to do this is to actually put the 10 millimeter rods or whatever size you, you decide to use, well the X rods through the bearings and then lay them on a vise so that you're just pin you just make in contact with the edge of the bushing and then increase pressure tighten the vise a little bit on one side then flip a little bit on the other side until it works its way in until it's virtually flush with the edges these should slide pretty freely. This one slides a little more freely. We'll assemble it as a unit and then we'll make some fine adjustments using a blow dryer or a heat gun just to soften the plastic slightly and to make sure everything moves freely and allow it to cool in that position, the correct position. Because this operates as a unit so even if this is binding a little bit, we have to make sure that these line up just right on both ends and then we'll put it back together. So the next step will be taking apart our printer at the rear so that we can access the Y axis linear rods. You see, I've already taken apart the printer at the rear. This is the rear part of the printer, and this is the front. So we'll take these out because we're gonna use the rods to actually line up the other larger 12 millimeter bushings that will fit in the ends of here. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll use a um we'll use the vise to press fit these into place. Now we have this part assembled, extruder carriage in the middle, mounts on the end. You can see these have been press fitted into the Y mounts. We don't know the distance, the correct space in between each ends. We have to line it up with the um, brackets here, with these brackets, just to show we have the correct distance and we'll lock that distance into place. Okay, now that we have this installed, the nozzle itself will be roughly in the, in the middle of this, ideally. So this is really the distance the maximum distance that this will go as far as um, reaching the z zero on the x-axis because this, it'll be beyond the heat bed otherwise I mean for printing purposes that's the maximum distance and you can see that on the other side as well the maximum distance is it'll still be a gap and this is the x-axis is just under a foot it's, it should end up being about 290 millimeters, you know, as far as printing dis printing on um, distance. Okay, now that we have the axis moving just fine both ways, we're going to install the NEMA 17 stepper motor onto this part here. It's going to go in this exact orientation with the cords going towards the rear of the printer. This is the left side of the printer if you're looking at it from the front. To mount this, we're gonna use four M3 by 10 millimeter screws. We'll also use some washers just to give this a little bit of support the screw head out of some support on top because this is plastic and we also use a washer on the bottom that'll go directly over these holes not for support but just to add a gap between the plastic and the stepper motor just because this does generate heat we want air to be able to flow we don't want this pressed totally flat we want a, at least a little bit of a gap so it's not in direct contact and allow some cooling and prevent this part from warping especially if we printed this in PLA generally this doesn't get that hot that will melt PLA but we don't we just want to protect our investment we'll 
with the washer. Now the side where the linear rail is, it'd be a little more difficult to just drop this in. Okay, before installing this, we're going to put on our GT2 tongue pulley. This is going to be hard. You might be able to do it this way by lining up those washers on top of the motor and getting a couple screws in. Either way, this is going to be difficult. And I apologize in advance for the amount of frustration that you're probably going to go through. Doing what should be a very simple part of this build. Let's see, if holding on to the mount itself may allow me to. I'm using an Allen wrench that allows me to tighten at an angle. I don't have to be, I don't have to do it from straight on. I can make a turn at an angle. Um, hopefully you have one that has a, a end such as this. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You actually, you may, you may have to take out the rods, install, install the um the motor, and then put the rods back in. We need to be at until we get the other side installed. So this, it's not going to, it can't go anywhere because there's just not enough room for it to come off. But we'll wait because this will line up with with the holes. Here, the belt will run through here. The belt will attach at this point, come around the pulley, and run through this larger hole right here, and go to the other side where we'll have a, another pulley installed. <laughs> 